Hello people of the internet, this is Chris at Bedford Heights Auto Service. Well, not very many viewers you actually see me in the shop, but this is the 2001 Jeep Cherokee Sport that we've been putting the engine in for the uh, past week or two. And I'm at the point right now uh, that everything's hooked up excluding the exhaust. Um, exhaust and the shift cable. Shift cable unfortunately got broken uh, when we were installing the engine, but things do happen from time to time. So. At this point, um, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to crank the engine to build up the oil pressure. Right now I have the coil pack disabled, uh, or unplugged if you want to call it, and all the fuel injectors are unplugged as well so it won't fire. But all I want to do is crank the engine over, first make sure it cranks over smoothly, and then I want to make sure that oil pressure builds up. From there, I'm going to plug the injectors back in the coil, and we'll see if it fires up, as it should, well, as long as everything was set correctly. So. Uh, with that, uh, forewarning, once the engine does start up, right now it is just an open exhaust manifold, so it's going to be quite loud. So, unfortunately I had to leave that off because in order to get to that shift cable, it's a lot easier if we just um, leave the exhaust off for the time. So, okay, well, here goes nothing. I'm going to first put the uh, cable back on. Okay, you just heard the locks actuating there, which is good. It means I got everything hooked up. Such confidence I have, right? Okay, so I'm going to go over there. Um, please note that once I actually do start this, um, considering everything starts up and runs correctly, um, I'm not going to run it for very long because well, obviously the exhaust is wide open and it's loud. And I don't have any amperes in the engine yet. I do have oil, obviously, and an oil filter. Um, but I'm waiting for a few clamps to uh, clamp the upper radiator hose. So we're not going to need any amperes at the time being just to run it for a few seconds anyway. So. Okay, I'm going to go crank it, see what she does. I think the battery's dead. Let's find out. I got two of them. This is just my amp plant. My regular meter's dead. So this will uh, this will do for the time being, just to see if the battery's in the car. It's got power. These uh, these terminals are a little nasty looking. So I was hoping that uh, to leave them loose in case I have to disconnect it, because the vehicle does have a uh, remote start system built into it, and uh, sometimes a remote start system, once you um, short power the car, it will automatically start cranking. It's not what we want. Okay, I just tightened the terminals down here a bit, and I heard the locks go off again, so you know, the battery's not dead. Um, just got to tighten the connection. Take two. This time I won't follow the left one and come back over. We're going to hold for a second to grab that phone. Sorry, I had to answer the phone. So now, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to crank the engine over, make sure it gets built up oil pressure, and uh, I'm going to stop talking.
of when the, cable, the shift cable broke. I have a feeling the transmission is not in park right now. So, pause the video again. I'm sorry. I'm going to put it, raise it up in the air. Uh, make sure the transmission's in park and that should crank. So, yeah. Pause it again. Sorry. Okay, I'm back at the end. So, first off, um, reason why I wouldn't try to crank it all, it was in reverse. So, neutral safety switch won't allow the vehicle to start unless it's in park or neutral. Put it in park, uh, go to crank it, and then you hear click, and all power goes out. Well, that are terminals on this thing. It's got one for the original positive, which is just a really shitty, poor connection, and people jump started this thing multiple times, probably had a bad battery, which I know for a fact I had a bad battery, because there's battery acid marks all over the hold down, but this is a relatively new battery. So, by the time we're done with we're going to have to put a couple new terminals on this thing. But, I got those all cleaned up, got them tightened down. Can we see if the engine cranks down? This is unfortunately the things that a lot of people don't see, that little things here and there can uh, drive you insane when you're doing projects like this. But, it's to be expected. So, there's always little finix. Little, well, finix is the word I'm looking for. Uh, little quirks you gotta work out when it comes to this stuff. Sometimes you'd be lucky. I've had engine projects, put it all together, put the key in, boom, no problem. Sometimes, like this, being that it is in 2001, so it's a little bit older of a vehicle, it's, uh, sometimes you have connection issues. So, that'd be good. Okay, now, I'm going to just crank the engine over and the little oil pressure. Okay. There's a uh, successful crank. Now, fun part. We're going to reconnect the fuel and the spark. We'll see if this bad boy runs. Coil's plugged back in. Now, spark. Injectors, plug them all back in. Oh, the uh, trucker cables here. Just um, for the shit of it, because uh, I thought I was going to have a connection, a bigger connection issue. I wanted to set a jumper cables for the negative of the body just to help the ground. I didn't have a very good one. But thankfully, I was able to clean it up enough that uh, power and ground has been restored and is not having any issue. Sorry, one of these fuel injectors is upside down from the factory. Most of them are different right side up. I don't know why the hell it is on that. Okay, so now's the time, I guess. We're going to try to start it up. Um, new forewarning, if it runs a little funky for a few seconds, that's normal. Um, yeah, let's we'll see what happens. And you've been warned, it's going to be loud. I gotta go into the phone now. We'll come back. Well, we're at a recap. She runs. Loud as living hell, as I promised. 
and a good amount of smoke coming out of there when it first started, but eh, that's to be expected. It's a rebuild engine, what do you want? So now at this point, um, now that I know it starts, now that I know it runs, it runs quite well, I'm now going to uh, concentrate on that shift cable, get that shift cable replaced so we can actually shift the transmission. And uh, the white pipe uh, that's off right now, we're going to take it out. Uh, this is the white pipe, inverters, white pipe comes down there. I gotta put a couple O2s in there. Um, but I guess that's pretty much it for the time being. So uh, I've got a little bit more work to do, yes. Uh, I gotta track down on this ship cable because unfortunately a lot of parts stores don't have it for some reason, even for a 2001 Jeep Cherokee. It's a popular vehicle, don't know why. I'll find it somewhere, worst case scenario, I have to get it from the dealer, but hope not because dealers are, as everybody knows, quite pricey. And uh, they don't have it in stock. I'd have to wait a day or two to get it. So that's going to inhibit me. But uh, I think we're going to end the video here. I've probably repeat that a number of times, so I do apologize. Uh, this is Chris from Bedford Heights Auto Service. Thank you for watching. And um, the next video I post is going to be exhaust all running and then um, I go for a test drive after that. We gotta get a temp tag from the owner though, so that's kind of important. Can't drive illegally, ladies and gentlemen. Don't do that. Please don't do that. I'm not responsible. Have a good day.